Hey guys, what's going on? This is King Alfie, and today I'm going to be showing you how to download and install World Edit, as well as we're going to be going over some basic functionality for the mod, that way you guys know how to get started. I'm going to be breaking this video up into chapters, that way you guys can skip ahead to whatever part you need, whether it be the download and install or the tutorial, but I would strongly suggest watching the entire video, as well as it would be much appreciated on my end. And as always, if you're liking these videos, make sure to subscribe so that you can see more by me. But without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do to get World Edit working on your computer is download your mod API. So for this video, as always, we're going to be using Fabric, but you can also feel free to use Forge. It works just as well. So I'm going to provide you this link in the description below, but go to this website and download the installer for the Universal Jar. This is just going to be the easiest way to do it. So you can bring this onto your desktop if you feel like it, but honestly you can just click it here, that way you can install your API. It's going to bring up this GUI here, just make sure it's on the latest version of Minecraft, hit install, and that is done. So after you've installed Fabric, you're going to want to come to this website, which will also be provided in the description below, to download World Edit. So once you get to this page, just go to the Files tab here, and then just click the most recent version of World Edit. So this is good for Fabric and Forge, so regardless of which one you decided to install, click on the latest version and download it. Perfect, so once you have it installed, you're going to want to put this in a place where you can find it again. So for me, I'm just going to drag it onto my desktop here. Now you're going to want to go into your .minecraft folder, so Windows R to bring up the run menu, then percent app data percent to bring you to your uh, roaming data. So go to .minecraft, and for this I have installed a fresh version of Minecraft. If you don't have the mods folder, just make one. So new folder, just call it mods. And then all you can do is open this folder and drag World Edit into the folder. And that is all you need to do to install World Edit. And then from here, because you have Fabric, you can install anything else that you want as well. You can throw OptiFabric in here, you can do Phosphor, Sodium, Lithium like I showed in my other video, link will be in the description. You can install Replay Mod, do whatever you need to do from here. But this is installed, so let's move on to the tutorial. Also, quick side note, if everything was installed properly, you'll see the fabric loader on the side here for your Minecraft install. So you can just launch the game and it will launch with fabric and all of your mods that you just installed. Alright guys, let's crack on with the tutorial. So as I'm sure you guys all know by now, World Edit is a mod to, well, edit your world in Minecraft. So it is most commonly used by map builders because you can use it to do a very large amount of work in a very short amount of time. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in a sec here. But first things first, let's make sure that it's installed properly because we just did that. And the easiest way to do that is just put two slashes in here. And if you see commands coming up, then you've properly installed it because these are all of your world edit commands that you can use. Let's start out nice and simple. I'm going to tell you about the tool that you're going to be using the most in World Edit, and that is the wooden axe. This is how World Edit knows that you're trying to select different positions to execute your commands, and the way you do that is right and left clicking with the wooden axe. So to select position 1, you're going to left click wherever you want, and to select position 2, you right click, and it'll just form a cube or rectangle around those positions. And you can also get some height to it as well. If you just throw some blocks down, you can readjust either position by right and left clicking again. So I can turn that into a cube and I can make it a bit smaller if I want. And that is how you select your area for world edit. And if you decide that this is no good and you want to move it somewhere else, just do two slashes and then deselect or decel and it'll deselect your area. You can also select an area using the slash slash pause command. So slash slash pause and then one or two to select which coordinate you want to select first and then just give it an x, y, and z value and that'll select that area for position one then just rinse repeat for position two and it'll do the same thing as clicking on stuff with the axe. Now let's put that to use with our second command which is copy. So we're going to take that house behind us and we're going to copy it to the clipboard, that way we can paste it somewhere else. 
Now, grab your wooden axe and head to the corner of wherever you want to copy. So we want to make sure we're in front of the stairs by a little bit. So we're just going to select this block right here as position one. Now we're going to want to go to the opposite corner and we're going to want to select position two. So we want it a little bit behind the house and we want it high enough that it selects the entire thing. So we're going to go to this block right here for position two. Make sure you got your entire structure selected and you're going to want to copy this. So be mindful of where you're copying from because if you copy it from a bad position, then it'll also paste from a bad position. And what I mean by that is if I were to stand right here and copy, and then I stood right here and pasted, the house would be below me. It's relative to your position. So if we want to copy this house, then let's just stand in one of the corners here and we're going to do slash slash copy. And you'll see there that all of our blocks have been selected and copied to our clipboard. And note that does include air blocks. So be wary of that while you're pasting. So let's just go to another position. So we're just going to stand here. The house is going to be pasted right here now if we do slash slash paste. Boom. And actually, I derped that up a little bit because um, I selected a block down. So yeah, we got a little bit of height to our building, but that just goes to show that it's relative to your position, because if you'll remember, I clicked this block, not the block above it. Now just for reference, I want to show you what happens if I select it from a bad position. So we're going to copy from on top of the house like I said before. We're going to go over here and we're going to paste it. Slash slash paste. And there's our house. Not so great. So yeah, just be mindful of where you're copying your building or structure from. The next command I want to show you guys is the rotate command. So this one is really good if you want to build say 25% of your building and then just rotate it a bunch of times and paste it down. That way you reduce your workload. So first thing you're going to want to do is select position one and two, then jump to the middle here and copy this to your clipboard. So slash slash copy. Then you're going to want to bring up your rotate command. So that's slash slash rotate. Then the second argument for this command is how many degrees would you like to rotate this? So keep in mind, this is a game of squares. So don't give it a weird angle like 27 degrees because it's just not going to work out. Stick to your right angles. So we're going to give it uh, 90 degrees, we'll say for now. So we'll rotate that. That's been copied to the clipboard, rotated 90 degrees. Then if we do slash slash paste, and look behind us, you'll see that this has been copied the exact same as it is over here, just rotated 90 degrees. Now we can do that again if we just up up, rotate 90 degrees again, then paste it back down. Now it's over there. Then we can do it one more time, rotate 90 degrees and paste it. And it's over there now. And we have this copied perfectly four times rotated all the way around. Now I'm going to show you guys how to use the stack command. So we're going to use that to make a row of houses here using the model that is just directly behind us. So we're going to select position one and position two. We'll just head up here, throw a few blocks down. Boom. Cool. So we want this street to extend down this way. So all we need to do is face in this direction and use the stack command. And then we just need to specify how many more of these houses we'd like. So we're going to do two more houses and boom. Now we have a bunch of these houses laid out in a street, but let's say we didn't want that. We can actually do slash slash undo and it'll get rid of those. And um, well, the entities just kind of dropped on the ground there, but all the blocks are gone. Also, to expand on the copy command, if you look at this area here, we're going to copy it real quick. So slash slash copy. And if we go, say, over here and paste it, slash slash paste, what do you notice is the difference between this one and this one? If you said the animals, you'd be correct. So if we wanted to copy the entities as well, then all you need to do is when you're copying, do slash slash copy and then dash E. 
and you'll notice that seven entities have been affected as well. So if we come over here and we paste it down again, slash slash paste, we're gonna have no entities again. However, slash slash undo, if we do paste and dash E, then it's going to copy over all that entity data as well. And you can copy over your villagers, your sheep, your horses, or whatever other mobs you happen to have in your building at the time. All right, so the last command I want to go over with you guys today is the schematic command. And I've actually used this one on multiple different occasions, and I'll show you why in a sec here. So if we turn around, we're going to do it on this house right here. So we're just going to grab position one and position two. There we go. Stand in the corner over here and copy it. And now we're going to use the schematic command and you can short form it as well to scheme. Now you've got a few different options. We're going to save this schematic and we're just going to call it house. Cool. So now that that's been saved to our clipboard, we're actually going to switch worlds. All right, here we are outside of our little base here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drop on the ground here and we're going to do slash slash scheme again and we're going to load the house schematic. Cool, so now that has been brought on to our clipboard in this world here. And if we just do slash slash paste, we can paste our house down. And that is how you use the schematic command to move stuff around different worlds. I used this a lot while we were troubleshooting the Enigma Season 1 server because we were trying to figure out if we had corrupted data and we actually contemplated moving all of our buildings over to a brand new world. So yeah, this can be really useful for troubleshooting or if you just want to move things around different worlds. And there you have it guys. That's how you download and install World Edit. And I went over a few of the basic commands too, but if you guys want to see me go over more of the commands in depth, then leave me a comment down below letting me know that's what you want to see. Also, I'm going to leave a link to a World Edit guide in the description below. That is how I learned how to use a bunch of the different commands. And I would strongly suggest checking it out because it gives you a lot of good information. But that's going to do it for today. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to like the video. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.